I know you guys spoke to Jerry about National Treasure three a while back. Believe me, I bring it up with him every single time I talk to him. Uh, I, I tried my damnedest to get National Treasure three up. I, I love those movies. I worked on those from from sort of inception. And, oh, um, uh, believe me, I was going to bring this up. I have to ask you with National Treasure. So to me, I, I think one, and please correct me if I'm wrong on this, but, but my gut feeling is that one of the reasons National Treasure 3 didn't go is that when the first one was made, Hollywood was a completely different beast where there was a lot more first dollar gross, a lot more producers getting money, like the, the economic system. Of well, that, movie- that's sure. That, that is for sure. Uh, producers do not make what they used to. <laughs> right. So what, what, I'm saying, what I'm saying, though, with National Treasure is, you know, back then when Nick Cage did it, he was getting a lot more money, a lot more, there was a lot more money being pulled in terms of, like, say the movie made $100 million, maybe $30 million was going to people before the studio saw anything. I'm just guessing at this, right? So my question is, is one of the reasons National Treasure 3 never got made is because it was almost too expensive to make the movie because of old production deals? No, although that's a, that is a, a concern anytime you do a sequel, particularly a sequel that has historical first dollar gross out. Um, there's always a way to work around those deals. It never got to that um, on National Treasure 3 when I was around. I, I think that part of what happened, and this is a, a more sort of uh, uh, insider nuance take on it, to be honest, um, what I felt happened is even though the movies themselves were extremely successful and had really a really strong fan base, it's, it's, it's a movie that gets brought up all the time, particularly the first one, Unfortunately, the company was never able to capitalize on it as a franchise. It really operated in the market more as a movie with a sequel. And National Treasure 3 would have been another sequel. They never found a way to integrate it into the parks. It never caught on as driving, even though there were a lot of consumer products, books, and things like that. It never really caught on as as an independent franchise. Yeah. And I think that makes the numbers look different. It makes the it, it makes it harder to get a company like Disney to focus resources on something when they can go make Toy Story or go buy a, a cruise ship. Um, and it, and if if the company itself had been really excited about moving forward with it and thought that they could could blow it out, um, we would have found a way to make the deals. Yeah, so basically you're saying if national if people had bought National Treasure action figures, we <laughs> wouldn't have bought National Treasure 3. Uh, I think it's more if we had, found, I think today there is something, there's some really interesting stuff that you could have moved National Treasure out, right? So uh, I'll give you an example of like why I love that movie, not just from, a, from an entertainment standpoint, but we shot at the National Archives, which was not easy to pull off. The production team tore their hair out trying to get the approvals through the federal government and all of that stuff. Then the year after the movie came out, attendance at the National Archives went up 400%. And it stayed high, and it has continued to stay at an elevated level since that movie came out. And... I loved that. The number of friends of mine, the number of family members who came and said, you know what, my kid won't stop talking about American history. And he's reading all these books and now I've got to read these books so that I don't look stupid in front of my kid. I thought that was like one of the greatest things that ever happened. And the Ben Gates character, the reason I love the Ben Gates character is because his superpower is that he cares and that he's smart. And it's not, he's not the strongest guy. He's not pulling out a gun. He's not kicking somebody's ass. He's using his intelligence and his sort of lack of cynicism to win the day. And, and I love that about him. And I think that's, um, it's harder to do, but I thought it paid off. So I really think that nowadays um, with the technology, with the smartphones, all of that, there's a way to take that fun and move it out into the digital space and to whether it's location-based gameplay or, or things like Pokemon Go or whatever that you could have done to really make it a bigger uh, cultural, uh, ha- to have it have a bigger cultural impact than it did. That said, I know Jerry keeps working on stuff and I know that there's a lot of interest in a series and in a, another feature and I think it's ripe to sort of reinvent. I, again, I've interviewed him 
what every time I've interviewed him for like 10 years, that's my main question. Uh, but he did give me, you know, what's interesting about Jerry is that he never gives me a scoop. He, he's so good on his talking. And when I was talking to him last time, he actually dropped out. They were developing it for Disney Plus as a National Treasure series. And as he said it, I'm like, I actually think no one knows this, but I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> enough, you know, after I'm like, oh, wow, he actually gave me a really good story. Thank you. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's been doing the he's been doing press for a long time. He's I really couldn't believe it. <laughs> it was the first time in you know all my years of talking to him that I got something that was you know an actual breakout story like that. 